I think, I think it's incredibly cool. So what we're going to do now is say, okay, that's just some sort of trivial playing around. What about actually doing some, so, some analysis here? Other things I can do, I mean, remember one of the nice things I can do here is I might want to start by looking at different types of movies that are out there. I can say, let's sort by HD movies, that sort of thing. But let's, you, you, the real power that you get is when you come to do the analysis in the pivot table. So what I've got here is I've got a pivot table that I've already just started to build. And I can kind of browse through it and see the sort of things that I've got here. So here's the box office sales. And if I go through box office sales, you can see I've got all-time rank and movie and release date. I've got something called, got something called gross, which I presume is American Pie. Um, oh, that was good. Uh, I like that one. Go I've on. got something called adjusted gross, which I presume is American Pie too. I'll go through that one. <laughs> Let me just, uh, well, we probably won't use the box office ones. Let's use the 20 million rows, because that's actually kind of more impressive thing to do there. So what I'm going to do is just, Get, get rid of the box office data, and we're going to drag in some additional things there. So what I think I'd like to do is do this. I, I'm really interested in what do people rent on different days of the week. So I can say, give me day number of the week. So I'm going to get day number of the week here. I don't need it in the sum. I'm going to put it in, say, the rows there. And I'll get day number of week. And now it tells me, well, these are the sales for different day numbers of the week, where one is, is Monday. Now, I've, this looks a bit strange here because I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Monday to Thursday. I've got negative 1, and also all the values are the same. So that kind of tells me that there's probably something just a, a, little bit, a little bit wrong there. And in fact, if I was to do anything else there, if I was to take, say, day number of week and put it onto columns, it doesn't really help much. I still get that. But let's try and just get one other thing in here before I fix it, which is to find the, uh, the genre. So I'm going to go down here and look at, well, I think I'll take category and put category onto rows. So there I have my, my data, but you can see that it's not actually very helpful because all the data is repeated. There's actually something wrong here. Now, as data, as business intelligence people, we can probably make a guess as to what's wrong. No, no guess. Okay. Well, the problem is that I don't have the relationship. I don't have a relationship defined between this um, this media table and, and the, um, the date table. So I haven't actually joined that up. So what I can do here is just flip back into uh, the Gemini environment here. And when I go back to the uh, Gemini environment, I'll go back to purchases. And what I'm going to do is create that relationship between the purchases table and the date table that I want. So I'm going to say create a relationship between purchases date and the date table and actually, what I'm going to do here is use the date ID, which is the correct kind of primary key for that, and say create. And it's going to create a relationship there. So now I'll actually have related purchases to purchase ID to, to the date table. And when I go back to Excel and refresh the pivot table, with any luck, everything now looks somewhat better. I've now got all my purchases and things sorted out. So I've been able to create the relationship, go back in, and just, just clean it up a little bit. So the next thing I'm going to do here is um, you'll notice that the negative one has also disappeared because there were no uh, purchases on the negative one. So that, that's disappeared from that column as well. So there's other couple of things I can do here. I can make it, for example, um, show it as the percentage of the column total. Okay, so what am I getting at this point when I see percentage of the column total? Well, what I'm seeing here is, you know, the, the, the different um, categories of movie that are watched on, on different days. And I can see it there, and I can see that, for example, comedy is watched a lot on, on, on a Monday. Um, drama watched not so much on a Monday, that sort of thing. And I can scroll through that and do it. Of course, it's Excel, so I can take that and format it all and look at Western, and go in and look at, for instance, conditional formatting. And I can look at color scales and see that. And I'll see when I, when I do that that actually most of them are kind of red. And um, there's a very few comedy stands out for sure um, as being one of the most popular ones. And of course, if I go down here, you see that people aren't really watching Westerns at all, and nobody's really watching sports. So there's all I can do here and get this kind of flexibility and drill into some analysis. But one of the most interesting things for this is um, just remember what we're working on here, how much data we were actually working on. Let me just remind you of that for a moment by changing this from percentage of total. Let me just go back and say show the values 
as no calculation, just show it as raw data. Go back to our gross total at the end, scroll down, and show you that number, and just remember how many purchases we're talking about. We're talking about 20 million rows of data that we were analyzing. 20 million rows of data brought in, and you see how easily I was interacting with it? As soon as I was working that pivot table, I'd just forgotten. I was just working with a pivot table at that point. It's just like working with a pivot table. And um, working on a laptop, which is kind of pretty impressive, yeah? Cool. Well, so I've cheated. It's actually not working on a laptop. It's, it's a demo. It's actually working on a netbook. <laughs> All of this was done on a netbook PC. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you, Donald. Now, hold on. Let me ask you some questions. Oh, no. <laughs> I'll be kind. At least you didn't show risk. Um, hey, this was showing a lot of risk. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm just in Excel, right? This is Personally? Like, no, I mean, I'm like what you did. Like, this is just. I actually thought you looked pretty much like the Stewie in the performance yeah. point. I, you know like, what? I do have that head. But like, the, the power of this is I'm in Excel. I'm using the Gemini add-in within Excel. So I'm, I'm leveraging all the things that I know how to do within Excel. A, this is obviously something new that's come in that you and the Office team have been working, the SQL and the Office team have been working together on. But, the, um, but the, this delivery is through Excel. This is, this is through Excel. This is Gemini is the add-in to Excel, and everything else is just native Excel that you see. In fact, I think this is so powerful that people stop calling it the Gemini add-in. They'll call it the Excel wrapper around Gemini. Right, exactly, exactly. And, and I can leverage all the things that I know how to do in Excel. Absolutely. I mean, that's the, the important thing. I mean, when I was looking at that expression language, I mean, that, um, let me go back and just show you that expression. I mean, that didn't look too challenging, did it? I mean, that's just pretty much like, you know, there's, the, there's that calculated column. That looks pretty much like an Excel expression. That doesn't look, for example, like MDX. That looks much more like a kind of Excel expression for um, for, for doing that calculation. This is much easier to do. And that's, that's what I was getting at. So I don't need to know MDX at this point. I don't really need to know modeling. I just need to know what my, what's my data. Yep. How do I make my data look and feel the way it should for me? Absolutely. And then I can just drop this into Excel. So there's not a, a lot of learning here. For, for us BI folks, this is around building out a model without knowing anything about dimensions or hierarchies or understanding MDX or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, the important thing is it's just very, very easy for anybody to do, and, then, and, it, and it feels just like Excel. That's really the important thing. Um, in many ways, most of our effort that we've put in here is not creating something new. It's creating something that feels very familiar. That's the most important thing. And how do I, how do I share this workbook? Because 20 million records, is that a, how big is the workbook? Um, I can show you the, what, the, what the workbook size is there if I just go to the desktop. Any guesses? 100 megs, 50 megs. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that would be a super compression, wouldn't it? There's yeah. a, there we go, 203 megs in there. Wow, that's pretty, it's 20 million records. It's still pretty good. I'm not going to email this. Aren't you? Well, yeah. I might, but <laughs> yeah, my might, IT folk might not like me to do it. You'd be mailing around that Excel spreadsheet with all that yeah. ACDC stuff. There you go. No, um, <laughs> no, what you would do here for the collaboration, once you've actually created an analysis that you want, what you do is you, um, you can publish this up to, to SharePoint, effectively. Yeah, there's a Gemini server, which runs there on a machine, which runs SharePoint, Excel services, and the Gemini version of SQL Server. And then you can publish it up there, and people can use Excel services to browse it and see it. And it's thin it. browser experience. Thin, all th th thin client experience to see this, yeah. Caching and all that good stuff. Caching and everything done, refreshing of the data, everything you need. Awesome. That's awesome. Thank okay. you. Thanks so much. Cool.